Hi everyone, it's Don and I hope you're having a fantastic day. Well, when we were looking at the Sun Princess before she sailed, a lot of people had some concerns, right? I'm worried about this or I'm worried about that. And so let's go over some of the concerns and then one or two items that I think became a concern once I saw them. Okay, first concern is the ship is too big. It's too large. Well, it is larger. It's about 20% larger than the Royal class ship of Princess Cruise Lines, but it's larger in a way that the venues are separated more. So if you have a destination you have to get, you may have to walk further, but it also makes it feel not as crowded. Much like an Oasis class ship, most of the people spread out quite well that you do not feel really crowded on the ship. So was is that a real concern that the ship is too big? I think it had to be for all these different venues to be on there, the, you know, the new dome entertainment area, the, the buffet the way they've done it now, the, and the kids area up on talk, Park 19. I think they needed to spread some of this stuff out and I think they needed a ship of this size to do it. So I honestly don't think that that is a big, big concern. I did not feel like this was way too large and I also did not feel that it was too crowded. Number two that came up was people are worried about the buffet because the eatery, which is the buffet, is now on deck nine. It's not up on the upper decks by the pool. And people are saying, well, you know, I like it up on the top. It's, you know, lots of glass. You can see around. And also, they're handing you the food now. You have to go around and they'll hand you a plate, put stuff on the plate and go from there. You don't get to go and serve yourself. Well, for one thing, that really solves the problem of too many people not washing their hands and spreading the norovirus around that has been quite a few outbreaks this year. So I did not find, now I know the inaugural cruise, people were complaining that there were long, long lines to get their food and everything. I ate at the buffet multiple times during my 10 days on the Sun Princess and never, never had to wait more than two or three people in front of me to grab something. And I usually waited because I was just letting somebody who was kind of standing back looking, I kind of let them go in front of me. So in reality, I did not have this issue whatsoever. And I also did appreciate if I wanted to have more food, I just told them, no, I, I told them exactly what I want. So on one day, I wanted to test this theory of how much food they would give me. So they had spring rolls. And I said on one day, I just want one spring roll. He gave, put, a, put the one spring roll on it, handed me the plate. And I carried my plate to the next place and added whatever food I wanted. The next time I went back and I said, I want seven spring rolls. Did I get a dirty look? Did I get a funny look? Or, oh, you can't have that many all at once, sir. You have to come. They so just put seven spring rolls on my plate. So you can get as much as you want, just order it, and then bring your plate to the next place, hand them the plate, they'll pile up the food as much as you want. So yeah, that wasn't an issue, and it does help with the cleanliness in the buffet. Really do think that was a good idea. Number three, the piazza is changed. Will it feel like the comfort of home returning like a regular Princess Cruiser is so used to the design of the piazza that being a hub? It's still a hub. There is a little difference. It's a little larger. It now has seating on the upper decks around it. So you can look, you know, there's two levels of seating plus a level up behind them of kind of like standing and some um, bar chairs up there as well. So a lot more people can look down and watch what's happening in the piazza and enjoy whatever entertainment. And they are 
doing a lot of entertainment. They held numerous game shows there. They had numerous bands playing in the piazza. The dance troupe came and did a number in the piazza. They have a lot going on. There's always something it seems going on in the piazza. And this gives it a lot more room out there for people to view. And there's plenty of places to get drinks and bars on every level around the piazza. You don't have to walk down seven levels to go to get a drink or anything. And now the International Cafe that everyone's used to being on the lowest level of the piazza is now on the higher level, deck nine, on the way into the eatery. And it, uh, it kind of offers even more choices. There's more choices of food, definitely more choices of coffee, and they have a full bar there with cocktails that you can make specialty coffees and drinks and everything like that there. So you're getting more choices that way. And down below on the lower deck, there is another coffee place and bar, as well as a place to get some snacks, pastries, and things like that. So they, they kept some, the same thing there, just not, just, just not as much choice. You're just gonna have to think, don't go to the bottom level, go to the top level, and it'll be the same thing. It's, it, it really wasn't an inconvenience for me whatsoever. I went down and I got myself a hot chocolate almost every morning. That's what I like to do when I'm getting ready to go up and around. I'm not a big, huge coffee drinker, but they made delicious hot chocolate and the staff there was being run ragged during uh, you know port days when people are getting ready to get off. They all head to the coffee shop before their excursions and everything. And those poor people working in that area are probably the busiest people on the ship. Next we have people are worried about the two new specialty restaurants, uh, Chef, you know, The Catch by Rudy, as well as The Butcher Block, because they're part of the buffet, but they're not. Now let me explain. They are uh, further back in the buffet, and if during the day when those two restaurants are not open, they're only open for dinner, they use that area for spillover in the buffet, for instance, on a sea day when the buffet can get really, really busy. Now, it can get really busy in the buffet because a lot of the buffet now has outdoor seating, which I thought was a really nice addition when you have good weather. We were in the Mediterranean in winter, and some of our days were not great weather, but when we had a sunny day, boy, those outdoor seats were full and people, it, it really made the buffet open up. The eatery seemed much more open. So that was good. However, uh, in order to get to the butcher's block and catch by Rudy, there's kind of a long corridor. There's some seating in there as far as like, like a bench seat is concerned, but it's not an eating area. And it does sort of separate the butcher block and catch by Rudy. So will there some, be some people walking by sometimes? Yes. Does it seem like it's not as intimate, say, as the Crown Grill normally is? Or if you head to the brand new uh, Tapanyaki on board and the hot pot, well, it's in its own room and it's all, yeah, it's not as themed as you might like, but it's still a quieter area than it, it seemed. I, we sat out there and I, it didn't bother me in the least when people were just walking by and it wasn't noisy and the food was excellent. So did that bother me? Not so much. All right. Now, as you know, I didn't get to see the shows because they weren't ready yet. Uh, I did get to see in the dome. I got to see them practicing all over the ship and it's gonna be fun. I'm not convinced about the theater in the round part of the, you know, the arena yet. Uh, I'm not a fan of theater in the round. Um, they keep telling you there's no bad seats and yes, there are. Yes, there are definitely bad seats. I'm gonna put out a video on Just On explaining my position on it and why I, I'm not a fan of this type of theater um, and the reasoning behind it and you can see if I'm right or if you completely disagree because it's a personal thing, right? It's a personal thing when you're looking, it's just like your taste buds or your individual taste buds. Some people love lobster. Some people think it's a big bug in the sea. So, <laughs> you know, everything is, is subject to your own eyes and your own feelings and 
I'm not a fan of theater in the round, period. Doesn't matter if it's on the Sun Princess or if it's on the Edge Class cruise ships of Celebrity or if it's even on the Holland America Rotterdam. Um, I'm not a fan of those round stage theater shows. All right, finally, let's talk about Park 19, the new kids area slash family zone up on the top deck. People were really worried that it's gonna be super noisy and it's gonna take away from a lot of the ship and they're gonna become a, you know, kid friendly everywhere and it's just, it's not Princess. Princess doesn't have well, slides and things like that. And no, they don't, but they're trying something different. Now here's the thing, in reality, it doesn't take away any space really from the cruise ship because they basically replaced an area where the sports court would go. Now, if you've ever been on a Princess cruise ship, how many people are actually using the sports court? The people who are using it are usually younger kids bouncing a basketball back and forth. Well, they, they have that area there. They, you can still do that. They have an area where they have the giant, what is it there, uh, Connect Four and things like that, the beanbag toss, all in this little area. They also have a great seating area up top around the ropes course, as well as hammocks. So the families can just go and relax and watch the kids go by and have fun. And it's away from the rest of the cruise ship. So the noise doesn't spill over into the pool deck or anything like that or into the sanctuary. It's very well thought out that way. And they've also put the jogging track up there that goes around the outside of that area. So did it take away anything from the ship? No, I think it actually added some good fun venues that doesn't add up to noise and doesn't you know, take away from the rest of the cruise ship. So no, I'm not concerned about that at all. And I actually think it's a very good addition because quite frankly, out of all the princess cruises I've ever done, I think I've been in the sports court once. And I bet most of you haven't even stepped foot in it once. <laughs> so I think, I think it was a good choice, I really do. Finally, a concern. And for me on the Sun Princess, the Piazza's always been that fun hub where there's always some live music going on. They'll do the egg drop there. They'll do beanbag toss competitions, golfing. They'll do the horse race, you know, dice roll where everyone can participate, things like that. Those kind of shows that everyone can gather around and look down and it's not like a focal point that you have to have a good view to see unlike, say, a game show. So while I was there, they did hold numerous game shows in the Piazza, such as the Yes No Game Show. Well, a lot more people can see it, I guess, in the Piazza, as opposed to being in Princess Live. However, not that big, a like Princess Live holds about 200 to 250 people which is a lot of people to watch a game show. So if you have that game show twice in the evening, that's 500 people roughly that can see the game show, plus people who are standing up. That's a lot of people out of the cruise. But in the Piazza, when you're watching something like that, for instance, when I get up, I'm stand, sitting in the center of the Piazza and we have one host here and one host here. So if you're over here in the front looking down, you see. But everyone from say this point on is looking at the side or my back for the entire Yes No game show. And they have this beautiful screen in the back with the yes, no and the clock ticking and everything. But when you're over on the side, you don't see that. You're, you're, you're arching your neck to see that and you're looking at the back of people's heads and it's not as good of experience, I don't think, as being in Princess Live, where it's a stage in front and everyone can see. So that was, that's a concern for my, me, because I saw the detail that they put in to having these game shows in the Piazza. However, I don't think it's as good, of, good as seeing it in the stage at Princess Live. I don't think it's a good 
venue to watch those types of shows. Hold the music in there, have the dance parties in there, have the egg drops in there, have all those other things in there. However, like game shows where you're looking and watching people do something, if they're in the center and they're only in facing one direction, then half the people are never watching. They're just watching from behind. And that's not a fun viewing experience. At least that's my opinion. Again, I'm a big theater guy, much like the theater in the round. I'm not a fan of that neither. So take Take that with what you will. But those were the big concerns going into the Sun Princess. Too big, hard to get around. The kids area, Park 19, you know, the the buffet, the two specialty restaurants are gonna be right there. The eatery, I don't like that. It's on the, all that really pales in comparison. Once you get on, you'll find it'll take you probably four or five days to get used to the new configuration of the ship. Once you do, you'll find you can get around just as easy as any other Princess cruise ship and you'll start to really enjoy the venues when you're on there. We didn't get to enjoy all of it because some of them were still closed, like you could hardly ever get into the dome. We couldn't get into the theater except for the odd show that wasn't the Broadway shows. But, uh, and Park 19 wasn't running, but the areas, the way they designed them are really well done. And I think people, if they give the ship a chance, will absolutely love it. So I have some concerns, but overall, I think the Sun Princess is well worth cruising on and it was a beautiful ship. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think, um, yeah, I think I like the theater in the round. I think I like having more people in the piazza to watch the game shows. Do you think I'm a little out to lunch on that? Or is it I'm being too picky on it? Do you think the ship might be too big? You didn't want kids area at all on the cruise ship. You want nothing to do with the kids. I think um, it was a smart choice, but that's my opinion and my opinion alone. So yeah. We'll leave it at that. Let me know in the comments down below. What do you think is a good was a good choice? What do you think was a bad choice? And until next time, I hope you appreciate this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Want we'll to see more tips, more tricks, more travel vlogs from around the world? Hit that subscribe button. Until next time, have yourself a safe and a great vacation.